explaining the nine races of Vera. Vera, I guess, is the um, is that the world world of Vera? Yeah, legacy of the warlock. Fuck. Uh, hard not to play human when you can make it look exactly like you do in real life, but at the same time, the orcs look incredible. Will definitely be a last minute call once I get my hands on the character creation. I mean, yeah, some people like their character looking like them. Some people want the complete opposite. That's why they play goblins in World of Warcraft. But yeah. Pew! Rishi S8. Let's go. What's this about? What is up, people? With What's the reveal up? of the Tolnar, I feel it is time to revisit the first ever Ashes of Creation video on this channel, which was going through the races. Obviously, it's been like four years since I did that video, and it's time for an updated breakdown on the nine races of Vera, from lore to customization and more. But before okay. we get into this, we are making some great progress, but let's get to 20% subscribed viewers. 83.5% of you coming to watch all of this lovely Ashes content still aren't subscribed and if you subscribe here's the interesting thing though notified. about youtube i like I'm not, i see a lot of people do that with the subscribe stuff is it important to have the subs or is it important to have the views i feel like it's way more important to have the views the sub is a metric but i think like it's a, i feel like it's a secondary metric compared to like the views if you have a video that has like 3 million views, you're going to make a lot more money than if you had 3 million subs and no views, you know? ...of all the Great Ashes news, so click it. You know you want to. Races are one of the most important parts to an MMORPG. They are your first step into the character creation and then the world, where you will spend minutes to hours creating this character that is going to represent you for years Seconds. to come through the content. In randomize, the randomize, Long randomize. Ago, in this is how I create characters in a new game, okay? Click randomize as much as you can. Like, pick your race, obviously, then randomize the appearance as many times as you can until it looks something presentable and then make minor changes boom you're done don't need don't need more than that unless you're like super care about what your character looks and again i really care about what my character looks but not to the point of like the finest detail you know the Ashes of Creation Kickstarter launched with a plan of an MMORPG unlike any before. And with that, we'll we revealed the eight playable races and then the ninth one added through stretch goals after hitting $2.5 million raised for the game. These races are said to set That's a crazy, new standard man. in the MMORPG that is crazy. genre as each will have their own feel compared to one another, where an elven fighter may feel different than a dwarven fighter, but still serve the same role. That seems hmm. to be something unheard of in MMOs, and I really don't know how they're going to pull it off because they haven't really talked about it since the Kickstarter, but it will be pretty... I wonder if the difference would be... Uh, it's not necessarily like a racial, but it's more like... Um... Okay, let's take like Terra, for example. If you want to be the best archer, you would play like the tiniest fucking character because their hitbox is smaller, right? Would it be a play on hitboxes for the most part? So, for example... A two-handed weapon for like the biggest character would have the biggest reach, right? But maybe he would be because of it. He would also be a bit slower. Whereas somebody who's smaller would have a smaller reach, but he would be substantially faster because just less distance to cover, right? Uh, so or maybe like the smaller guy can pick up heavier weapons than the big guy, because again, momentum smaller distance to cover therefore you can lift more right stuff like that um like the weight of the weapon but again these minor changes so for example small characters hitting faster would be a very minor feel it shouldn't change you know shouldn't change too much in the sense of like grand scheme of things for example just because i'm hitting a bit uh faster but because i'm using a less um a shorter weapon then my momentum is decreased a bit therefore my damage is lower whereas like if i'm a massive dude carrying the biggest fucking sword yes i have a bigger sword but i am slower so the damage is uh even though the the hit damage um Per hit is increased the damage per minute would be the same you know stuff like that so you would go for like a big class if you want to nuke somebody and you want to go for a smaller class if you want to be more consistent with damage right um so like but again it shouldn't 
make that big of a difference where it's like very very noticeable you know so maybe something like that but i doubt like anything more maybe just like the animation of the spells uh would be different but you know Cool we'll see. see we'll see what they the mean by it. You pick the race and it's just cosmetic. It doesn't yeah. really change the feel to the character that much. Now, speeding up the clock five years, here we are finally having a good idea with what Only each race years. will look like along with the story behind them. Starting off with the Ayla humans, your typical human race, whom before the fall of era resided in the capital city of Aelin. Clearly, they weren't God too creative damn. with their names as they named a city after themselves. There are two sub races underneath the Ayla name, the Kalar humans and the Veiloon. The Kalar, whom are from one of the largest empires in the old world. These guys are extremely loyal to their roots and will rise to any challenge. The Kalar humans have a okay. heavy European influence to them, and you yeah. will find these guys sticking around the Riverland Zone if you choose to play in their starting area. Looks like the Europe, Kalar yep. humans are the only ones that we have seen in the character creation process so far, but like all races, it will be very extensive, allowing you to sculpt the faces in no way an MMO has allowed before. The Veiloon are the desert dwellers, finding themselves living in the immense heat of the Vera Desert, which neighbors with their Kalar brothers in the Riverlands. The Veiloon are one of the wealthiest <laughs> empires in Sanctus, which is the world of- Why is it always desert people that are the wealthiest? <laughs> in every MMO, in every, what's it called? In every, like, uh, TV series, shit like that. Like, the desert people are the merchants. They are the richest. But also, they have slaves. Maybe that's why? Because of slavery, they're the richest. So it's like the disparity between the the poorest and the richest is just that big. They're just they're the richest in the world. Of no magic that all the races fled to after the fall of era. The harsh desert environment they live in has taught them to kill or be killed. The race will have a very heavy Middle Eastern racial influence to them, as you can see by some of their 3D renders and architecture. We then have yeah. the Dunzen called Dwarves, the oldest nation in the world of Vera and one of the first phrases to set You would here. think elves would be the oldest nation or the oldest overall because usually that's how it is. Dwarves live long, so if, if it's like elves live like 800 to 1000 years, dwarves like 400 to 500, humans like 100 to 200 and yes, again I'm talking about like in-game stuff, not the real world because there are no elves and dwarves in the real world. But that was usually kind of like what they went for in those archetypes. So interesting to say that to see that dwarves are the oldest here. The dwarves tend to rule through a council of guilds, and this council chooses a royal family council, every two hundred okay. years yeah. to help rule. These dwarves are made up of Very the Dunir well. and the Nikua. The Dunir are your traditional dwarves dedicated to their craft and wealth <laughs> within these mountains. They have I love that every game sees dwarves as like square people. <laughs> like look at the armor a very short, square muscular build to them and the customization like humans and all other well, like everything is squarish right square 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 square, square. Own, even allowing for the female dwarves to have beards these dwarves are said to have a more nordic culture influence rumor has it that their home is in the tabletop mounds one of the more northeastern zones in vera these dwarves look like most of your traditional fantasy dwarves although they weren't always the alpha one dwarves were a lot more skinny like the current nikua but but after tons of feedback from the alpha they got a pretty big yeah. makeover the nikua on the other hand are your less traditional dwarves making their home in the tropics instead of the map well it just looks like a darker mini me <laughs> that doesn't even look like a dwarf it just looks like a mini me living on beaches near the ocean these dwarves have a more halfling appearance to them than an actual dwarf which i like to describe to them as the gnomes of ashes of creation the Nikola hawaiian are dwarves hunters, which is part of the reason for their move away from the mountains the mountains felt like a prison to the nikua and although they are more hunter than crafter they are still highly hmm. skilled artisans these dwarves with their more polynesian influence will have a cleaner customization look to them meaning less i am I wonder, would there be uh, race class limitations in this game? I feel like they said that there won't be any, but honestly, aesthetic-wise, like lore-wise, it would make sense, though hair on the body although they may still have some facial hair as seen in this model the beards are going to be more of a characteristic of the Dunir. 
the Kvek Orcs, split into mm. the Renkai and the Vek. The Renkai are one of the tallest races in Vera. These guys have been seen within the swamps of Vera and with either red or green skin tones and have had almost as dramatic of a transformation as the dwarves when it comes to appearance. They originally looked more angry and aggressive with dragon scales down their arms, but again, after player feedback, Intrepid has taken an entirely different approach to these guys. Hmm. And made them Asian. <laughs> they just made them Asian. <laughs> architecture and armor has always seemed to have more of an samurai inspired feel to it yeah. and now it has been recently revealed that their look has as well but it is unknown if we can take it back towards the old direction in character customization or not but i'd imagine they'll stay more true to this code. what happened to the old image of orcs being pig people i wonder <laughs> Look, Renkai believe in ultimate focus and controlling their immense power, but when they become enraged, there aren't many who will live to tell the tale. There has been rumors that there are some dragon enraged, yeah. behind Angry these people. orcs as well, which would explain the scales on the original Renkai, but whether or not the new models of the Renkai will still have these scales is unknown. The Vec, on the other hand, mm. are the complete Shamans. opposite of the Renkai. Rumored to have made their home in the Taiga Mountain-inspired zone, these orcs are purple skinned skinny they look like they would live in caves and have tusks almost feeling more of what you'd expect from a troll in most mmos the vec yeah. are astrologers they have always been looking to the skies as star maps numerology and prophecy are yeah. a huge shamans astrology yeah. the vec have a more of a mesoamerica racial influence to them as well mm. the pure and elves these elves are split into two races, Wood the elves Empyrean and, high and elves. the Pyre. The yeah. Empyrean elves are a force to be reckoned with. They have an elite military force Mages. with highly structured government and plan to carve their place within the world of Vera. These elves were once more humanoid, half-elf looking things, but again, thanks to lots of feedback, they got a more traditional fantasy feeling to them. Taller, like bigger ears. <laughs> the they are rumored Good. to reside within the ancient forest of Vera, and these elves have a much more Greco-Roman feel to their architecture. The Pyre, nice. on the other hand, are a more nature-entwined creature with antlers that look to be made from bark trees, and these guys are ruthless and said to rarely take prisoner. Supposedly home to the magical forest of Vera, they tend to make their homes within nature itself, with architecture built hmm. from trees and moss blending with the environment else, around yeah. it to have a more woodland inspiration. And lastly, we have the Tolnar. This race is... The Druids, yeah. These guys... What are these guys gonna be? Hmm... Animal people, but what would be their class? Warrior is like available for all of the classes usually. <laughs> Everyone can be a warrior, let's be real. WoW has taught me well. Everyone can be a warrior. Uh what would these guys be though? Monks? Like uh weaponless fighters? Um something with let's say a war glaive. Not war like a big glaive, right? Like a a pole arm kind of thing. Uh definitely bow and arrow. Um, and probably shamanistic ma magic is one of the most interesting and mysterious races Ashes of Creation has. The furries. You have to have furries. related close to their chest, rarely saying anything about them and not even giving us a first look at them in the past five years up until the other day. During the fall of Vera, some of those of the four main races and a few minor that didn't make it to the Divine Gateways before they closed took shelter in the Underrealm to hide from the Ancients. The mm -hmm. Underrealm is a massive expansion of underground tunnels and caves with tons of fluorescent light. These guys have been here the whole time where everyone else is just now returning to Vera. At some point, whether it was by evolution or magic, these races seem to merge and the Tolnar are said to be a combination of all of them. Customization-wise, Tolnar will have the most expansive customization out of all the races as they have three racial influences to them humanoid mm -hmm. reptilian and mammal and when you set out to customize them you can choose which influences have more of a hold drastically changing the way your tolnar will look what race will you be choosing when ashes of creation launches drop a comment down below and if you're new to ashes and have yet to create an account feel free to use my i am usually elf or uh human but we'll see i like dragon people too if they look good like i'm a uh... What do you call them? Aura in um in Final Fantasy, but uh, it's hard to say. I think the humans here just look good enough for me to be human, to be honest. 
Uh, I usually don't like the furry classes too much. Um, but yeah, elves or humans. That's usually my go-to for sure. But yeah, anyways, that's the video. Let, let's uh, let's give him the outro. In the description below, where you can create Nash's account, jump in on the forums, and ready yourself for when you can finally play the game. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come. Awesome, cool. Uh, yeah, good video. Uh, covered pretty much all of them, right? Uh, but yeah, orcs definitely not me. Unless they're the only ones who can be samurai, then I will have to be an orc. Uh, dwarves are really not me. No, I don't care what, <laughs> what classes are locked to dwarves. If there are, I am not playing a dwarf. Uh, yeah, humans and uh, high elves for sure. But yeah, all right. Well, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Should uh, subscribe and like to reach ESH, and I'll see you in the next one right now. Peace.